Hello and welcome back to Brick Gaming YGO. Today I'm bringing in another video for all of you. Um, this video will be on how to win slash improve at the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. So I've been playing for a very long time uh, throughout like different formats and different time periods in the game. I've done both better and worse at the game depending on the format, but I've also done very well on different levels and have um, played in well, a lot of tournaments and a lot of regionals, YCSs, etc. So, first off, um, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about should be common sense for some of it, but other stuff isn't really so inherently like an, everyone will know this type thing. And I think this will really help out a lot of people who want to improve at the game, newer players who are getting back, or people who are getting back into the game. Basically, just about anything that can help you out on, I think, pretty much a local to at least regional or even for you, like, maybe even YCS level of uh, gameplay. So, I am basically broke this up into four main points with a little bit of a beginning statement. But before I get into all of that, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys aren't subscribed or if you haven't, like, subscribed after watching a couple of videos, please drop a sub. I'm trying to um, upload as frequently as possible. There's nothing in my way right now to not let me um, upload very, very often, like every two days. And if you haven't seen my last video, I kind of talked about where um, a couple of my files got corrupted and I had a little bit of a hard time uploading videos and I had to redo videos a couple of times, but I got all that dealt with. And now I'm going to get right into this video for all of you. So this is a little bit of my preface right here. And it's choosing a deck, your play style, and how much money you have to spend on the game. So, first off, choosing a deck, I would recommend testing on EDO Pro or Dueling Book first before you really decide on deck you want to invest in. I'm talking about investment. If you have, like, you know, deck lying around, I mean, you could potentially play that deck, but I'm talking mainly about investment here. If you want to invest into a deck, definitely play it a lot before you decide this is the deck I want to play. Next, um, after you kind of get an idea of what type of deck you want to choose, you have to also consider your play style. So what type of play style are you good at? And I've kind of broken this up using a couple of examples right here. So you have kind of more like the aggro slash combo decks with Thunder Dragon and Emancipators. You have more like stun with a uh, border control. And you have more like a, uh, I won't say exactly stun, but I would say that uh, Ultra Guide is kind of mixed between the two. And those are like kind of like a predominant type of deck. So a lot of decks you'll see in the meadow will be aggro or um, just combo. Then you also have uh, stun. And I guess the best term for like Ultra Geist or Sky Strikers is control decks. Those are like the general decks you'll see in tournaments. So if you're going to choose one to play, you have to consider what type of play style you want to work on. So for example with Ultra Geist, if you want to play like something like Ultra Geist, you have to consider a lot of technical play and a lot of uh, managing the game state, a lot of board, board control, and you also have to know all of the matchups because you have to know every single choke point for the meta with Ultra Geist. If you make a single mistake with this deck right now, or even like uh, multiple mistakes, it can cost you the game super quickly. Like. It cost me the game when I was first getting into this deck because I had such a hard time learning every single matchup and learning the deck itself. So it's a deck that takes a lot of time, but it's also very rewarding. Then you have um, control, or not control, but stun deck, kind of like Mystic Mine or Border Control or Border Stun, depending on like which variant you're going with. But a lot of um, these stun decks, the thing is that it's a lot less um, interactive in some respect. And you look at like Mystic Mind Burn or the Mystic Mind decks that are out there. A lot of it is just knowing your own deck. You really don't have to know your opponent's deck as much. You just have to know like general cards. It's a super easy deck to get into. Doesn't take very much effort. And it doesn't, and it's not like super hard to play. It's not like super complicated. So I would really recommend like stun decks for beginning players just because it really gets you used to the rules. I would also recommend your Dracos because it's super easy to play. And that's kind of like my opinion on um, stun. Then you got combo. Combo, I think, is, has always been, like for a few years now, has been the most prevalent decks you see doing well. Like Salmon Great, Orca Sky Striker, 
Adamanzipares, Thunder Dragons, and you can even go back as far as I think like you can consider Teledad one of those types of decks. It just with combo, you had to know the combos. That's the main thing. That's where you're putting all your time into. You had to know your combos and put time into that. And then if you're doing your combos properly and doing them well enough, you can easily just steal games and your opponent won't even get to play the game at all. And that's kind of the thing with um, combo. You have to know all of your combos, obviously. And then if you do, you should win the game outright. But if not, like, let's say considering going second or, yeah, break a board with combo, like, with a combo deck, it could be a lot more difficult depending on the deck. And it just comes down to the individual way you want to do it. And I would say that those are like the most prevalent types of decks. Next um, is budget versus expensive. You can get decks out there as cheap as like 50, 100, all the way up to like a thousand dollar deck. And there can be a huge range. So if you want to get into budget decks, a lot of things you have to consider is that you're not going to be getting those expensive like $50, $75, or $100 cards. You're going to have to go with something a lot cheaper, which could be a lot worse uh, playing against other people. But but you can still win with um you can still win and do extremely well with um budget decks like for example i took alter guys paleozoics which was a deck that probably was worth around 75 dollars and got second place with it go check out my other deck profile to see the video but yeah it was like a super super budget and affordable deck that you can still do well with so budget isn't everything and just comes down to what you're willing to spend and that's more of your own individual choice Next um, is going to be deck building. So first, want to mention um, ratios. Before you even get into every everything about your deck, consider your ratios and how much you want to play of your engine. The engine's the most important thing in the entire deck. Like if you're playing Altergeist with like one multi fake or one Melo Seek, it, it's not going to work for you. If you're going to play Thunder Dragon today with just one Titan. And like, let's say three extravagance in your deck, it's not going to work very well. Yeah, consider the ratios. And one of what I would recommend for doing ratio checks is if you go onto YouTube, check out deck profiles, and look at their ratios for the main engine. And that will help you out a ton and super, super easy to do that because you just look up the deck profile. And of course, there's going to be people with the profiles out there. So that really helps out with like ratios for the main engine. But now you also have to consider side deck ratios, you have to consider other main deck ratios. And for doing that, my best recommendation is to do what works for you and what, what the best cards are. So you want to first off consider your best options, then consider what works for you, and then consider what will probably be the best in the meta at the time. And that's how I would really like suggest you go about choosing your ratios. Next is um, card choices and choosing the best cards. So, if you want to make the best card choices for, like, your side deck, extra deck, all that fun stuff, I would recommend that you look up what cards are being played the most, or look through different deck profiles and look for overlap in cards. If you see a particular card that overlaps in, like, almost every single deck profile of a certain deck, that usually means, and, like, let's just say, like, the same ratio of that card, that usually means that, A, you should play that card, and B, it puts in a lot of work and is doing something correct. So that's how I would choose kind of like the best cards. But now you're choosing um, other cards, like other card choices. If you got like empty spots in your deck, which a lot of decks do have a lot of empty spots, I would just go around with what works best for you, as well as look at like um, some of the cards that other people are playing, but just not as frequently, and consider some of those cards and then uh, just work around with those cards. Next is consider the meta in your matchups. So if you're playing at locals, regional, YCS, yes, yeah, I always consider the meta, especially if you've never been to one or it's your first time going to a particular area or a particular locals, yeah, consider what's probably going to be the most played decks. But then if you're playing at your own locals, consider what, consider what your meta of your locals are. Guys in locals go from anything from really casual locals all the way up to like competitive locals. I mean, I mean, my like, my locals are pretty competitive. Um, have a lot of players that have topped YCSs, even one that topped a, a world champion qualifier event. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot more competitive at my locals, but for, you know, someone else who's have a lot more casual locals, let's say like 10 people and none of them really like play competitively, you're going to be looking at a whole entire different matchup. So, yeah, really consider what the meta at your locals or 
uh, regionals or how YCS is going to be, and then make some of your card choices around that. So also research other decks. That will really help out with you doing a lot better or winning in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. And that's what leads into the next point, test playing. First off, do test hands. Test hands will help out. This is more preliminary, and once you get past, you know, test hands, it, it's good to start off with. It isn't like, in my opinion, it isn't like the be-all, end-all of figuring out how well your deck is or how good your deck is, because it's just randomization and looking at opening cards. And that doesn't even like really help you get used to playing your deck. But it's good for preliminaries, like right when you're getting into the deck and figuring out your ratios, all that fun stuff. Next is test playing with friends and better players. Now, you can test play with your friends. I would highly recommend test playing with your friends. It, because it's convenient, it's people you get along with. And you also get in test playing against other decks. But also... If you're at locals or you're there early or end up being at locals late, whatever, I would highly recommend test playing against other players as well. And not only just the players you're friends with, but try to test play or work on your deck with the best players there. Like, if you're going to work with the best players, you're going to get the best feedback. That's at least my opinion. And by getting that feedback, you're going to be doing so much better at the game because it will be able to help you out with like some of your card ratios, some of your decisions, etc. So this is really important. Always, always ask for advice from um, the best players or the players who are better than you at the uh, tournament, whatever. Like it will really help you out, and I can't recommend it highly enough. And then finally, for test playing, test play online. Just do random matchups on um, EDO Pro, Dueling Book. Just do a bunch of matchups. I would recommend, at least like with what Patrick Coben once said. 40 hours a week before a large scale event, or like leading up to a large scale event, and we like get a couple weeks spread out and play like 40 hours those weeks if you really want to do amazing. I also think that there's players who can do really well with less than that amount of time, but it comes down to the individual player. But really, the main point I'm trying to get across is test play as much as you can online. If you're not able to go to events or you're not able to um, go locals, I know with the whole COVID thing, um, a lot of people are playing online. But, you know, if you're already not playing, like, if you're not playing online right now, I would highly recommend test playing online, even if you don't have any upcoming events or nothing going on. Once again, we'll, we'll really help you out, and you'll get a lot of matchups in. Now, for my third point, it's going to be something that a lot of people don't really like hearing people talk about at least like and a lot of this might sound a little bit obvious or a little bit like oh i've heard this on another youtube channel but technical playing technical playing is extremely important now i think and at least my opinion there's levels to technical playing you have people that misplay it a ton they just like misplay a lot and you have people that like seemingly never misplay and they do misplay you don't pick up on it or you notice it, but it doesn't seem like the worst thing they could have done or the worst decision making. And technical playing has those levels, but I think for the most of players, like probably about 80 to 90% of the players, everyone's pretty much right in the center of that. There's only like a few extremes on both ends. So how do you get better at technical playing? And how do you like end up like winning more games this way? Well, my first point is know your interactions. If you know your opponent's deck and you know your deck and you test it against it well now you already know a lot of the interactions which could give you some advantage against your opponent and this goes into technical playing if you know the interactions if you know like what your opponent deck your opponent's deck does and what your deck does especially in that particular matchup you're going to win way more likely you're going to be able to spot their opening you're going to be able to spot the cards that you need to hit in their deck you're going to be able to spot how to play around certain cards, etc. This is going to help out a ton. Just know your interactions, know what your cards do, and know what your opponent's cards do. And then just go from there. And this also leads into another point. Work on knowing card effects and reading people's cards. If you're at a big event, you should know a lot like the general cards. Like let's say Adam Emancipator is kind of meta right now. Well, you, you should at least research or know like a little bit about what, what Adam Emancipators do. But if you don't know what the cards do, always read the cards. You can, of course, ask your opponent like what the card does. And if you know your opponent or if you're like cool with them just telling you the card effect, perfect. 
but but if you want to make sure and double check your own interactions with a particular card always read that card always just have your opponent not read it to you but look at it yourself see where like the cost is see where like the effect resolves that all that like type of fun stuff and that's going to help you out a ton in competitive play and even just casual play next is avoiding misplays the best way to avoid misplays is by not making misplays and the way in which you don't make misplays is by first off of course reading the cards as i just mentioned knowing your interactions and finally double checking everything like i made so many misplays when i was a lot younger like just going straight in feeling like i knew what was going to happen all that fun stuff Here's what you're going to want to do to avoid as many misplays as possible, or if you feel like you might make a misplay in a certain situation. Number one, double check the card effects, read, look at what's going on in the board, double check all the interactions. You can think of, like, just think about the interactions. Then, before you actually make your play, double check in your head, just go back through everything, and give yourself, like, an extra one or two seconds to think things over then that should help hopefully and almost every time for players i know it will help them avoid misplays if they're about to make a misplay or if there was a mistake they could have potentially made that's just going to help out a ton in um competitive play and then finally um learn each step of the duel and this can lead into uh technical play quite a bit but one of the most important things you should know about is like each phase, like standby phase, main phase, and then also of course battle phase. But you should also know very specific terms. Open game state, what happens in the damage step, when like the damage is applied and other effects that happen, etc. Like what can be done in the damage step, what can be done in an open game state. All that stuff is going to be very important for you to know. And it can also help you out quite a bit in a tournament and help you out winning quite a bit and you can research each one of those things on your own but really like i want to break down something that i see a lot of people uh not understanding very well and that is open game state now surprisingly at my locals all people are getting better at knowing the damage step and i've explained it to people but it takes forever to explain because it's a damage step but open game state is super easy to explain this is something that you should all know Open game state is where there's no cards that have been played or are like being played at that time. So for example, the standby phase and the start of the main phase. And also remember, during these phases, during the start of the main phase, during the start of the standby phase, it's the, it's the, like if it's your turn, you get to play your cards first at the time. It's not priority or anything like that, but in an open game state, it's the player's turn and their turn to play first. Like, let's say you're going into the star main phase, and you have some playable cards in hand, but your opponent tries to activate a trap at the beginning of your main phase. They can't do that, because you have possible cards that you can play during that time. So the way people get around this is in standby phase. So usually most people don't have anything in standby phase. So usually during standby phase, if it's your opponent's turn and you have something in your opponent's standby phase, you can play a card first before them if they have no cards to play during that phase. And that's just an open game state at that point. And now finally, my fourth and final section, which is tournament preparation. Now, all of the other things I said are very important, and this is equally as important to everything else. Now, before a tournament, you want to get plenty of sleep. You want to like try to aim for even more sleep than you normally get. This will help out like with your gameplay during the next day. It will help you out win a lot more games by just having your mind more well rested. Next point is eating or eating throughout like the tournament. Now you can bring snacks, you can bring like whatever you need to keep yourself going. But the number one thing I would recommend not doing is just pounding caffeine, pounding coffee, pounding monsters, all that type of fun stuff. It, it's not going to help out in the long term, it'll help out in the short term. But by the time you're getting to the end of the day, you're just going to be extremely tired. So my recommendation is uh, plenty of protein, plenty of healthy foods, like go with like a usually like more healthy diet during the day before and day of a tournament this will help out will help you out a ton just from uh personal experience and personal recommendation and then finally uh the last two points are going to be kind of about 
hygiene and COVID. Now, you want to keep um, your hygiene good, of course, during tournaments since, you know, it's a long day. And also because of the Konami policies, but also because COVID is around. If Konami ends up throwing an open tournament at the end of this year or the beginning of next year, if we're lucky, um, we still have to worry about COVID at that point, I'm going to assume. And to get around that, my recommendation is to just practice good hygiene. Wash your hands, bring hand sanitizer, all that fun stuff. And now finally, finally, before you go out for a tournament, before you leave your house, before you get on that plane flight, double check you have everything you need. Your mat, your deck, your binders if you bring binders, your, um, like, phones, all that type, of, or phone. All that type of stuff, always double check that you have all of it before you leave, and that will help out you a great deal. Now, if all this stuff helped you out, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.